Welcome to paperfinesse.com. We'll be doing some tutorials on Silhouette Studio and also various paper crafts. So sit back and let's have some fun. Hi, today we're going to look at the Studio Designer version 3, the um, first update where they fixed quite a few bugs and it's looking pretty exciting. It's not perfect yet, but it's more than usable. And I'm going to start with showing you some of the preferences. One thing I want to show you, but you can't see um, in my recording window, but look in the lower right corner. And if you go right just below where you can see, there's a little, there's circle arrows, kind of like the recycle thing, but it's not. I'm going to click on that and it's going to cycle through different themes. That's just the white. That's gray. Gray has a little more contrast and so does the um, turquoise. And I'm also going to open preferences. In the same area over here is a little settings um, type wheel for preference window. Or you can, in a Mac, it's Silhouette Studio preferences. I believe it's file or edit preferences in Windows, I'm not sure. But just look at one of those three. And I'm going to go to display. And I'm going to go down a little bit. And the draw area background color, that's back here. You've got the current theme, which with the turquoise, I'll just do it for you and show. I'm going to hit. Well, right now I think this is a bug I reported it. I'm not sure or not. But if I hit apply, it's going to kick us out of the preferences window and take us back to page settings. I'll have to reopen it. So current theme, if I hit apply right now, this would make this a light turquoise, which I didn't like. White makes it white. Gray, I like the gray. It is enough contrast for me to see better. Also, the icons weren't this big. Let me go back to, um, I guess it's down a little further. No, here, button size. It was over here on the smaller. I went up one. Um, you could go up a little more. I wanted to make sure it fit in my recording window. But let me show you what happens if we do make it larger. I'm going to hit apply. And if it doesn't fit in the area that you've got your window open to, you've got an arrow and then a list of whatever icons aren't visible is down here. So if you shortened your window, you still have access to all your icons on the side. So let's leave that there for now. But I want to show you some new exciting features that are added. And the ones I'm most excited about are in the designer edition only. As you can see, I am using the the designer edition and I know a lot of us want to save and conserve paper so I prepared a file it's going to look like a mess oops let me open it up here it's just got a lot of different images and I, I copied and pasted I've got images on top of images I just put a whole bunch of images on this page and I could go around, arrange them all, and try to get them to fit the page the best as best I can. But watch this. I'm going to go to Edit, Select All, and right up here is this N. It's called Nesting. And this is Designer Edition only. And I can have these fit within my page, nested together to the best that it will fit to conserve paper by either using my media, whatever media I've got selected, or I'll show you the next one, but use media. Let's go with use media. I'm just going to go nest. Look at that. Look how much room we've got left. Look at the flower even goes up between the bottles and it really utilizes the space. Let me zoom back out a little bit here. I am using um, eight and a half by 11. But would you imagine that there was that much space left on the page by looking at that mess? Pretty cool, huh? Okay. Another thing is, let me get something here that might be able to fit. Well, here, I'm going to make something bigger. Okay, I'm going to just draw a rectangle. And I'm going to draw a circle. And this is a feature that I had wished it had 
quite a few times, especially when I'm duplicating um, styles of items. And what I'm going to do is I want to go to the line color. Let's make it green. I'm going to go to the style so it's a little bit easier to see. I'm going to make the line a little bit thicker. Okay. And I'm going to fill it with a pattern. I'm just going to pick anything here. Okay. Now, let's say I've got another shape and I want to use, I want the same border, I want the same pattern applied. Well, instead of redoing everything a second time, uh, well, let me back up a second. Even if I had cut lines set on here to perforate or cut or whatever other settings I've got, whatever settings are on here, I want to transfer to this circle. So I'm going to select the circle and I am going to go to, go, oh shoot, it's below my recording window. Straight down here is an eyedropper with a little rectangle over, or a little triangle. It says transfer properties of a shape to a selected shape. I'm going to click that and I'm going to take it. See the icon? I'm going to take it and just click on this image and it automatically transferred everything. Isn't that cool? I'm sorry I can't get below this recording window. Um, I, rec I also reported that as a bug. Trustfully it is. I can make this window shorter or narrower, but I can't make it any shorter. It won't move. So I also wrote silhouette about that. Let's see. Okay, let me open up a library item. Something that might have. Well, let's try this. Make it smaller so we can see. Okay, I'm going to ungroup it. Go with the gradient. Something cool with the gradients as well. Let's say that wasn't exactly the shade I wanted. I could go to advanced options and now they give us the ability to change our gradient color. Let's say I didn't want this um, black, I wanted it brown. There we go. And this one brown. I can select this color. Oops, I can see. <laughs> the easiest way to select this one in brown, the same color would be to have an eyedropper, but I don't don't see an eyedropper. Okay, something I'm gonna have to play with, but um, it didn't add it here either. Let me select here again. There we go. See, I just used it. It is there. Okay, that works. And that changed my gradient color. Earlier when I did this, that didn't work. When I changed this, it didn't change here. So, and then you can still change your angles. But I love that we can change our gradients. Another thing that you can see while this is open is the layers. Now the layers icon is straight down. It's the very first icon on the bottom um, to the far right. This is open layers pane. And layers now, we really only have one. You can turn it off and on. Um, let me see, let's add a layer here. Let's add a layer. And let's say I'm behind that layer. Let's say I'm doing a card or something and I want to put the background on it just for visual. Let's fill that. Let's fill that just with a solid color. Okay, I'm going to object, arrange. I'm going to send it all the way to the back. Hmm. 
what is happening here? It's on the front, it's not going backwards. I wonder if we can move layers here, I'm not sure if we can or not. All the programs I use, I can click and drag and move the layer. Well, that did work. Okay, I just moved the layer. Um, that arrange go to back seems to me it should work, but it didn't. But what I wanted to show you is if you have something in the back of a, the bottom layer or in the back, and you're working with items here, let's say we're trying to select or, or drag this item, what happens is this one moves instead. So to prevent that from happening, we can now lock the layer. Again, layers is another feature that's just in Designer Edition. Okay, now I can click this D and move it by itself without accidentally or moving without accidentally moving the layer behind it. So, so that's a cool feature, especially if you're designing and you're setting up prototypes that you want to see what the card or the scrapbook layout might look like, you can lock certain layers that you don't want to move. Okay, now if you want to delete this background, you have to unlock it. And I'm going to delete it. Okay. Let's say we're ready to print and cut this. So I'm going to go to the cut settings. Now the little icon's changed. It looks like our little cutter blade. And what's wonderful is they gave us our no cut, cut, and cut edge back. If you saw any reviews or if you had the first version 3, that was removed and it's back again. So we can have, let's say just on this one item, I don't want to cut it. You can do no cut, and you can have your cut. So I just want to show you that real quick. The other thing that is, the other thing that they did on this one now is, you can now go to File, Save As, and if you do Save As, it'll save as a .studio3 file. So it's specific to this version. And you'll want to save it that way if you're using any of the layer features, if you want to maintain any of the new features that are in version 3 only. But if you're just making cut files that you're creating that you want to share, that are your own files that you own the copyright to and you want to share them, then what you can do is save as legacy. This is version, version 2. If you save as legacy, then other people that aren't using version 3 can also open the files. For instance, if you save as a Studio 3, just regular save as, and somebody that's got an older version, let's say it's version 1.9, and they want to take the studio file and save it as an SVG. You can only do that in version 1.9 or version 2.0. And there's quite a few people that want to save their files as SVGs so they can use it in other programs, such as Make the Cut or Sure Cuts a Lot. And so they've got those versions. So if you are doing that or are sending it to someone that's doing that, then you save as legacy. Uh, I hope that's not too confusing. I tried to make it as simple as possible. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask. I will answer. Um, I think for now, well, let's look at a couple more new features, which I highly suspect are designer design edition only. Oh, I know what I want to show you. Look, I've set this. Let's go back to um, preferences. I'll go up here so this is what you can see. something I like. Um, remember where, where it was here. It's 
See, I'm still getting used to where where everything is. Okay, so let's go to page settings. Page setup. Page settings windows. They changed that light guide too. Okay, I want. I'm using portrait because I'm going to print, but I'm also on the um, cutting mat, 12 by 12. Now, just because, just as an aside here. The paper is eight and a half by 11, but you don't set the cutting mat to that size unless you're using the portrait, unless you're using a mat that is that size. I use the 12 inch mat with eight and a half by 11. So you set it up here, page size by the paper you're using. And down here, you set it by the mat that you're using. And I also checked show print border. I want Right here, inside here, is where my printer, that's my border. And when I'm going to do a printing cut, I'll turn the registration marks on. For Cameo, says cameo or Portrait. And we've got the little hash marks back again which they ha it wasn't in the last version and let's see I want to move this out see, I think I just do that with a slider here let's see, let's see. oh it's the inset the position I want to move that over a little bit move the top up a little bit All right. Bottom is pretty close to where my cut line is, so I'll leave that alone. So these little sliders make it pretty easy to adjust your area. And the red is the cutting area. So keep your images within that red line. The little gray line is my printer. That's my margins for my printer. Okay, what else? I was going to show you something else here. The drawing tools. We have more, and I, that's why I suspect that it's designer edition for these as well. We've got a draw freehand tool. Let me get a blank sheet here so we can zoom in a little closer for you. Okay. This is draw freehand, which yeah, I can't do very good. Okay. And then you've got a smoother freehand tool. Do a little spiral. It's not very good, but hey, what the heck. Okay, so I'm going to select it. And then we've got, up here we've got new sketch tools. I'll click right here, sketch. And you can see the screen, but that's continuous. Here's scribble, pencil, pen, charcoal. Uh, let me draw just a basic square. The thing I wish they'd do is when once you draw something, it in most programs it's automatically selected. I should put in that suggestion. Okay, so it is the rectangle selected, continuous. I kind of like that outline, especially if you're putting it around a photo or something. Scribble, pen, that's kind of cool. Charcoal, pencil. Pencil looks fine. But anyway, kind of neat. Let's see. You've got in. There's the rhinestone. I haven't played with that one yet. Offset. The offset uh, icon has moved. It's over here now with the, with the sketch tools. This is a shadow tool. I haven't played with this yet, so I won't comment yet. And then your normal. Okay, well, I think that's it for now. I once I play with some more of the features and get the hang of some of this, I will post another video on specific features. Enjoy! Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please push the thumbs up like button and subscribe to the video. See you next time!